Hello, today I'm going to be reviewing the Dark Voice 33SC tube amplifier. It's a headphone amp. Now, I didn't feel like getting the brown box out, but it does come in foam pieces just like the little dot MK2, which I am going to be comparing against. And it does also come with a similar manual, but it's in Chinese. The power cord is a little bit longer than the little dot. I'd say that's about six or seven feet. And it's about the similar in thickness, so it doesn't really get tangled. Now this amp does not come with any RCA cables and no three and a half to quarter inch adapters. So you just get just the tube amp. I'm going to show you the amp first and then we're going to talk about it because this thing's heavy and big. So you can see it's very big and it's probably like two or three times the weight of the little dot. So it's very heavy. So there's the front of it. Now you'll also notice that the power switch is on the front and it's very smooth feeling. But it feels kind of cheap. I will mention that. And I forgot to mention on the little dot is that it does have a blue light that's very bright. And this also has a blue light as well that's kind of about just as bright. And then you plug in your uh, headphone into here. And it's pretty smooth. It's a little smoother. And the volume knob is not as smooth as the little dot. It's harder to turn. But it, it, it well, I will say it's smooth. It's just it's slower to turn and you'll see that there's actually no numbers around the volume knob I actually had to go on mass drop just to look at the pictures because I was like am I missing a piece here where they're supposed to have numbers and I looked at the pictures and that's actually what it's supposed to look like and for volume I only need the volume up to like I think this first dot here for like my Sennheiser 660s or cost headphones and then my model price goes like in between the second or third dot so I don't really need a whole lot of volume. Now one of the negatives is that these tubes do create some noise. Uh, but it's a lot quieter than the little dot. So you probably start to hear it. Maybe like right up to here just a little bit. And once you get to about half volume. It's a little louder. But it's still a lot less quiet than the little dot MK2. But it doesn't get much louder after volume 50. It's about the same. It actually stops right there, by the way. Now, these tubes, uh, when you're putting them in, if you try to push them down, they don't really go in. So you kind of have to push down and wiggle just a little bit just to get them in there. And there is a notch. And then on the top of this uh, big thing on the top here, it does have some writing. And then on the back, you can see you get a uh, where you plug in your power cord. And you can see that there's two screws in here. So that holds this black piece in place, unlike the little dot. And then you also get red and light, right RCA ins and left and right RCA ins. And I didn't really test the, the pre out on this with my powered monitors because I tested it for like 5 10 seconds and it looked like it was probably going to break my speakers, just like the little dot. So I didn't really test it on my powered monitors. I do want to point out that uh, this little like uh, silicone piece inside this port, it's really hard to plug in your RCA cable. But uh, these two have loosened up how many times I, I plugged it in and out. But if I try to plug like RCAs into the outs, it's really hard to pull it, plug it in and pull it out. So it's very tight. I just I do want to mention that. So I'm gonna put this down because it's really heavy. And oh, by the way, uh, you do get venting on the side and on the bottom. Uh, one of the other negatives I do want to point out is that the first time turning it on, uh, I smelt like a, a smoky, burning type of smell, like the first time I had it on. And I only played like two, two songs on it, and I had it on for like 30 minutes, and then I just shut it off. And then uh, maybe like a few hours later, I turned it on again and it still smelled a little bit so it felt like it was burning something off for some reason and then maybe by the third or fourth time I turned it on by the time I used it again uh, that smell has mostly gone away and after a month or so of me having it it doesn't really smell anymore so I do want to point that out that I did smell something when first turning it on uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the sound quality if you have watched my little dot review it's basically the same thing I'm gonna say 
is that the dark voice sounds more natural and just better sounding overall. It is a $200 amp. There's no DAC included, which is like the little dot MK2, which is $130. So overall, I like the dark voice better. It just has better bass. It's a little stronger. The vocals and all the instruments are just more natural and just better sounding. So for vocals, it's more smoother, more detail, and there's more vocal separation. There's more echo in the vocals. It's just overall better for vocals, and the highs are a little less fatiguing, less sharp than the little dot, but about just equal in detail. And, um, and it has more bit depth, so if you have something that's playing soft to loud, uh, you can hear the volume difference. So if you have like a singer that's, playing, that's singing softly to loud, or an instrument that's being played, softly to loud you can hear that volume difference much better on the dark voice while the little dot sounds a little flatter and um and there's more instrument separation and the sound stage on the two are about equal but the dark voice has the better uh imaging so um if you have like a one of those metal trash bins those circle ones with the fire coming out of it in a video game and you put that right behind you the dark voice will make it sound like just right behind you or if you have footsteps or guns going off, like or uh, or like other instruments or whatever going going off, you can pinpoint what direction it's coming from. And the little dot will make like that trash bin, for example, sound like it's coming five or ten feet away. And it's a lot harder to tell where footsteps are coming from. So it has not as accurate uh, imaging as well, but the dark voice has the more accurate imaging. So it's just overall the better sounding amp. And I do want to mention that my M1060Cs don't really like the tube so much, even on the dark voice. Uh, the Sennheisers sound okay on the dark voice. Uh, the dark vo the Sennheisers already kind of have like a warm sound signature, so it might be you might want the brighter sound signature. And then like on my Koss headphones, which are actually kind of have a bright sound signature, sound a lot better on the dark voice, I will say, and they really do like the tube amp. So overall, that's about most of the stuff I wanted to cover. Uh, if you want a little more information, then probably go watch my uh, Little Dot MK2 review. But thank you for watching, and I would definitely recommend the Dark Voice over the Little Dot MK2. And uh, I just want to point out that I tested it with only the stock tubes. So I'm going to come out with a Part 2 video where I talk about uh, some aftermarket tubes and to be honest, I have listened to the, after, the aftermarket tubes on the Little Dot a few times, but I haven't even tested the aftermarket tubes I have on the Dark Voice. So I might be really impressed with the aftermarket tubes on the Dark Voice. So stick around for part two. So thank you for watching.